part one. Blunderbuss and its intricacies. Hello pirates and scallywags alike, and welcome to the first of many parts of a series of uploads where I, Smithers, aim to go over how to execute and utilize King Hero's more advanced techniques. If you have yet to see both my original guide and the rebuttal of my guide for King K. Rule, I highly recommend looking over them, as they will help you more so understand the core aspects of what King K. Rule is. This level of understanding is highly recommended before proceeding, lest you missing the direction of many of the following techniques. They will also serve as a neater transition as to how this character functions in a typical match of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate than this video would. If you're all up to speed though, or are curious to know what a technical kinky rule looks like, you've come to the right place. Alright, ye buccaneers, a vast ye eyes and ears to better ye use of thine blunderbuss. The captain's personal favorite means of making others walk the plank, as you may know, is with his blunderbuss. It is quite strong at denying attempts at disturbing the crow's nest, as well as with it denying aerial approaches with ease. So what better way to start explaining this tech than with one that is both easy to execute and benefits one of Blunderbuss's aforementioned primary uses. Let's get started on showcasing why Kinky Rule is more technical than anyone saw coming. The technique we'll be starting with is Blender Bouncing. Blender Bouncing is a technique that has the momentum of King Kirill's full hop essentially reversed. The most common way of attaining this alteration is by executing a buffered full hop blender bus. One can also use this sort of fastfall by timing a blender drop when one would be at the crest of a full hop, or by replacing a full hop with a double jump. This technique would be predominantly integrated alongside one's typical denial of the airspace around King Kirill, amongst his other tools. Let's now continue on as to how this tech can be used, along with some more niche applications, for a better understanding as to what this tech does for K. Roll. Blunder Bouncing is a momentum altering tech that makes attempts to air to wear King K. Roll when the croc tries to use Blunder Bust from the full hop more difficult. This is true because Carol is isn't forced into clank lag in any form when the cannonball is clanked with, and that he then zips away to then catch a landing with the inhale of the blunderbuss, dash attack, dash grab, or some other anti-air slash get off me option. The preferred option mainly depends on where the opponent lands, the opponent's fall speed, and how much clank lag the opponent is sent into. There are some characters that can throw out two aerials in a full hop, but thanks to the opponent being forced into clank lag, they are either not able to perform a second landing aerial, or are in too much of a frame disadvantage to even be able to retaliate without some considerable risk. This is thanks to Kro being able to shield, parry, roll, spot dodge, and sometimes even throw out one of his fast red normals before the opponent can do anything about it. Without Blunder Bouncing, going for this flowchart just isn't possible in some characters, due to King K. Rule sitting there alongside the opponent for far too long of a time. This, in turn, enables the opponent to hit him through the Force Clank lag, commonly via an extended hitbox. So, as a synopsis of Blunder Bouncing in neutral, utilizing it makes gaining access to this flowchart both faster and safer. However, there are moves that can beat out attempts at accessing this defensive flowchart. Such options include large sweeping hitboxes, like Shulk's Fair, well timed lingering hitboxes, some multi hit moves, and projectiles that can beat out the cannonball. Steelness can play an important role if projectiles or multi hits can phase through the cannonball, so be sure to pay attention as to which moves go through it at varying percents. In matchups that can take advantage of this weakness, 
usage of full hop Krennering is usually the way to go, since the armor is typically enough to snuff out the opponent's attempts at zone breaking King K. Roll whenever he's trying to accomplish similar goals to Blunder Bouncing in neutral. You know how his technique works in neutral, but what about how it's used to keep your opponents overboard? Allow me to introduce you to how to go on the offense with Blunder Bouncing. Ledge Trapping with Blunder Bouncing is mainly characterized by trying to be more ambiguous in the ledge trap surrounding Blunder Bus. This can be attained by appearing to go for the usual weight on a nearby platform into a Blunder Drop Fair, but instead executing a Blunder Drop Blunder Bounce midair. A double jump. This bait is mainly applicable against characters that have a big enough disjoint to beat out fair, the blunderbuss's suction, and or if the opponent is well acquainted with the timing to slip in an attack between the put away of the blunderbuss and the incoming fair. One can also try to time a blunder drop at the spacing where the suction can catch three options at once, them being neutral get up, roll, and get up attack faster if one feels that the opponent is feeling desperate at the ledge and is going to pick one of those get up options. You are unlikely to get this off without a call out however since fair accomplishes the same task with less risk and blunderbuss can't be too slow for the likely scramble situation you may find yourself in when needing to use this. There is also the niche application of performing an ID Jade Blunder Bounce to land on a platform, just as one would start descending that grants the user to then perform the immediate pseudo fastfall or to wait and react like usual. A knowledgeable k player however will likely go for this not for the ability to blunder drop, but to land on the platform a few frames further into Blunder Bus, and or snapping to a platform to then be able to drop through it faster when desirable. Do note that performing an IDJ Blunder Bounce is necessary to land on them reliably with a technique. The only stage that sees use in tournaments which doesn't follow this rule, however, is Lilac. So at least there's something good about that stage. Upon executing Blunder Bouncing off the very plank you sent your opponent off of, a Kremlin can opt to go for a mix up tree that consists of an air notch to ledge, double jump up air back on stage, the inhale of the Blunder Bus, or, if utilizing the jump from ledge, any double jump aerial back on stage. All of these are strong options that can either pull off an edge guard, maintain advantage, or possibly snuff out reversal attempts. Heck, you can even chase the opponent to then go for immediate aerial attack if you're feeling adventurous. This tree can be gone for while both facing towards and away from the stage, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. The center of such decision making lies on determining how the opponent likes to get to the ledge. Just be sure to use this as a mix up against less explorable characters off stage, else risk needlessly losing stage control. Carol has a massive lingering dare and nair to lean back on, so don't feel too pushed to use this over them at times. For juggles, this tech doesn't present many desired outcomes. There are however a few situations that give blunder bouncing consideration when putting the opponent in this situation. As one may expect, utilizing the cannonballs to air-to-air -air the opponent isn't a bad option, thanks to similar reasons why it's strong and neutral. Burst and vertical momentum allows for one to disengage while denying the airspace above K roll. It does leave one vulnerable from directly above, so be sure to make use of this if the opponent is not directly above you, and or about to send K roll into a scramble situation. One can also use this to force certain landings via the claim space, i.e. constraining the opponent to do something, else succumbing to the cannonball itself. Make sure to not fall into such strategies too much, as Blunderbuss has a considerable amount of startup and end lag, with Fair often fulfilling this niche with less risk and sometimes more reward. Next up on Blunderbuss's tech is Vacuum Delay. This is a technique that has the vacuum of the Blunderbuss, well, 
delayed, such that it comes out at a later timing than it otherwise would if a special input is held. This stagger can be executed via delaying the input between frames 44 to 63, making the window go all the way to the second to last frame of the move's animation. Do keep in mind that the inhale itself comes out 7 frames after the input, which makes the window effectively 51 to 70. As a result of the text attributes, it will serve as a strong tool to break up the pace K-Roll is appearing to set. This means that in order to use the technique effectively, one needs to be attentive as to how the opponent treats slash deals with Blunderbuss. Makes sense, Recruit? Good. Let's get a move on to its utility, shall we? Vacuum Delay is a lot of niches in neutral, with it serving as a means to force the opponent to respect Carol whenever Blunderbuss is in play. This is due to a conglomeration of attributes that both the tech and the parent move possesses. These attributes include The preferred spacing of Blunderbuss allows for reactionary play with the inhale, thanks to the wide window it can be performed, and that the inhale itself has unreactable startup. The common counterplay, being dancing around midrange, can be played around reactionarily, thanks to the inhale having 18 frames of end lag, making the otherwise seemingly committal option, allowing for reactionary retaliations or simply a safe disengagement. And a grounded approach can be forced via area denial of the local airspace around k roll with a full hopped blunderbuss. As a result, one can use such traits to check people and if they are patient and or smart with their approaches around blunderbuss. This often coincides with another technique, blunder bouncing, that instigates its purpose given the ambiguity the committal option often needs in neutral. As you can probably tell by this point, Blunder Bouncing and Vacuum Delay have some synergy, which makes the then forced grounded approach, putting the opponent at risk of the Frame 7 Command Grab that can be imported for a very wide window, remember? A very conniving wall to have to play around. Blunder Drop also possesses some synergy, as it can aid in ambiguity of what is otherwise, in isolation, a very committal technique. The aid comes in the form of being able to dictate the timing of a descent, more than varying if one performs a blunder bounce or not. If you for some reason can't tell by this point, Vacuum Delay is a tech that is used mainly in conjunction with other techniques. Without them, who's going to just run into such a foreseeable option, right? Right? As a general consensus, this technique should be seen as a tool that forces the opponent to have to deal with the threat of. So don't disregard it entirely when the time comes. Or spam it. Vacuum Delay is an integral part of many traps and setups that a King K. Rowe player can go for, many of which lie in his royal advantage state. From reaction option coverage to cheeky steals of the opponent's stocks, there are plenty of options to keep the opponent on their toes as they are pressed further overboard. Vacuum Delay is the golden crown of King K. Rule's ledge trapping tools, when it comes to stages with platforms, that is. Platforms are needed since they provide the needed additional option, it being blunder dropping, so the landlubber can simply react to the blunder bus and then proceed to jump over k -roll for a sometimes easy punish. Be sure to position yourself such that you are able to cover getup attack, neutral getup, and roll at once when ledge trapping with blunder bus. This is key as one is aiming to see if the landlubber moves an inch back on ye poop deck, to then send them back overboard. If you think they're going to be too quick for ya, their ability to catch one off guard is very limited as Kero will be in prime position to do what's needed to be done when foreseen. Many try to outsmart the heavy weapons guy, but none have managed to outsmart his tried and true scheme. I like this new weapon. But what if they wait out the blunderbuss? I can hear ya asking. 
Well, since the captain can swiftly ready himself after the window closes for the inhale, a proceeding landing aerial attack or some other wall up back down to the salty waters below is a scary proposition that the opponent still needs to be wary of. So, vacuum delay deals with the eager, and the snappy retaliation mutilates the wary. So, you're feeling a bit adventurous, are ye? Well, look no further than this section how to take advantage of an overboard opponent with vacuum delay. Vacuum delay will be, as previously mentioned, used with the aid of other tech to strengthen and or widen blender buses, otherwise extremely limited niches. Using blender bouncing along with vacuum delay, for instance, will allow for deeper chases when attempting to edge guard with blender bus. Additionally, reaction option coverage enables one to be ready for when the opponent changes their recovery route after they see the attempted blunder bounce off stage. This is thanks to the window of the inhale being so large that, if performed fast enough, can allow K roll to both threaten low recoveries with the inhale while simultaneously being able to cover the likely mid recovery attempt via a veer or stagger by the opponent. This also allows K roll to swiftly get back to ledge to then either ledge trap or give the opponent less time to set up a ledge trap on K roll. Heck, if Yi Lan Lubber stalls long enough, one can just go for it again, or go for some other edge guard method, with the opponent now having very limited options. Be sure one has enough time to set it up, however, or reversal is coming your way. Also, don't just run off and chase him, okay? It's funny, but you'll likely get reversal there, at least in some regard as well. Juggles with vacuum delay are very ill-advised. Like, why would you do them? I suppose there is the niche of covering some angles of approach with the tech, but if your opponent is allowing you to get away with it, it's more in them for challenging the reactable setup for the coverage tool. Yeah, just don't unless your opponent is bad. Blender Drop is a simple tech that allows for King K. Rule to slip through platforms during any frame of the animation of Blender Bus. It's simple thanks to it only needing a downward input as if any other character were dropping through a platform normally. So this tech ought to have few uses as it's so simple, right? Wrong. This is probably going to be the most used tech by a King K. Rule player, as not only is it easy, it has a plethora of niches and is a core part of many situations that the king would be setting up for. From feints to option coverage, there's often little to no reason not to implement this at least somewhere in a typical match. You can't use it if there's no platforms though, so I suppose what I just said is irrelevant on those stages, and this whole section for that matter. Ah, uh, all the more reason to brawl on stages with platforms. Anyway, let's get on to the utility of the technique as it is stronger than one may think. Blender dropping will see much play in neutral, as it allows one to position specific cannibal heights such that one can more easily deny desired airspace locales. The most common height will be level with a platform to both deny access to it and or continue to deny jump-ins like usual. One can also take advantage of the set duration of the move to allow K roll to perform plat drop aerials faster than any other character. This property is thanks to how the animations are handled in Smash Ultimate, such that K roll avoids the plat drop animation entirely. Additionally, the drop through can be buffered during another action, it being Blunderbuss, which is impossible for any other character, except Byleth, I guess. And that one doesn't need to play around the ulterior timings that a typical match may present. So to submit what to aim for, partake in this technique in the event that acquiring the position and or air denial will benefit you. 
to keep the momentum going and or stunt the opponent's means of accomplishing the same task. Blender Drop as an extension comes down to the situational awareness and weighing the desirability of potential area denial of the Blender Bus along with the proponents of vacuum delay. As a result, making use of the tech here is very contentious as to when one should use Blender Drop in advantage over k other tools. However, the strength it does have cannot be ignored, for it is too good to simply pass up. Granted, there is at least one platform to use, of course. Let's start off with one area that cannot be ignored and has been abused since ye olden days of King K. Rool's meta, Ledge Trapping. The utility under such a schema is enabled via how much reactionary play can be incorporated whilst being safe about it. There's also the ability of the Blender Bus to cover every ledge option at once similarly to K. Rool's other common ledge trapping tools. When awaiting the reactable options, the usage of vacuum delay is crucial to make the guessing game of getting off the ledge more ambiguous, along with additional means spelled out prior in this video. Additionally, there is the niche of one performing a blender bounce with a couple additional mix-ups being enabled, thanks to Blender Drop's execution not being mutually exclusive to the shot of the blender bus itself. When applying all these straights together, it's possible to have a massive range of plat drop timings in addition to how fast one descends through a platform. So to summate what's going on here, Blender Drop is the icing on the cake, so to speak, to what makes Blender Bus a formidable option with the move's utility and safety. Don't just spam it, of course, as setting up the move is on the slower end of the spectrum, making especially a reset, very punishable if the opponent is smart about it. Using Blender Drop as an edge guarding tool is an even more conditional use case for the tech than if the stage is a platform to begin with. Regardless, one would want to take advantage of what makes it strong as a ledge trap, while properly positioning oneself on a side platform that also hangs near or over the ledge of a stage. Applicable stages would almost exclusively be Hollow's Pokemon League, Town and City, Yoshi's Story, and Northern Cave. Sometimes events may allow the use of hazards on Smashville, allowing for yet another possibility to find use of this tech. However, few if any run hazards on and or Northern Cave, limiting the usage to mainly Kalos, Town, and Yoshi's. One can also try and implement similar ideas to how Blender Bouncing can be used for Edge Guarding too. So trying to go for option coverage routines and or the threat of the vacuum itself can aid in the pursuit of keeping ye poop decks spotless from any filthy land lovers. Ah, uh, another technique that has only niches in the juggling advantageous substate. Have I mentioned before that Kiro doesn't have that great of a juggling game yet? Yes? Well then, what else am I supposed to put here then? Um... Just don't? But in all seriousness, I guess you can make use of some area denial strategies with some platform movement to make the guessing game a little more difficult at the expense of a higher level of commitment and or weaker punishes. The techniques in this section are too situational, as far as I can tell to have their own full-on part, but they do exist, so here they are. The text name is more impressive than it sounds, let's be real. Fake Shot Vacuum Cancel consists of inputting the inhale after one tries to shoot the blunderbuss when a cannibal is already in play, after which the inhale comes out faster than it otherwise would if the mentioned condition was not met. The command grab still has a startup of 7 frames, but there is less of a gap between the initial shot and the inhale being able to be inputted. Because of this, the window of the inhale moves to effectively 32 to 70, thus the tech additionally widening when the inhale can occur greatly. Therefore, the use of vacuum delay is given more leniency for scrambles and arterial timings that a typical gap between the shot and the inhale cannot hope to compete with. Alright, you've made it to the last tech of the video. 
I am going to have to warn you that what you are about to see is one of the most difficult techniques to perform with King K. Rool, and, as such, should not be attempted unless you are insane enough to try and perform it. Still there? Good. Now then, here is... All this tech does is allow one to delay a reshoot by 7 frames. Yeah, that's it. Pretty cool, right? Now you have learned the ins and the outs of ye trusty blunderbuss. Now go out and set sail with confidence, knowing how to best any lily livered folk you meet at sea. Big thanks to the King Hero Discord and Plague Von Karma for looking over the guide during production. Links to their stuff can be found in the description. Oh yeah, like and sub if you want to see more stuff from me. Okay, bye.